Good morning and welcome to our second Lent Reflection. Well, if you haven't already uh, watched our first reflection given by Jenny, I um, would encourage you to watch that as uh, she helps us to think about taking up our cross daily for Jesus. This morning's Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 to 14. Jesus said, And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily needs and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Well, I wonder if you've ever come away from a conversation with someone in which uh, you've struggled to get a word in. Or perhaps you've reflected on a conversation where actually you've done all the talking and you've come away not feeling any wiser about how the other person was thinking or feeling. Probably neither conversation was particularly fulfilling. But then there are those times with people who you know so well that you can just be in their company and be perfectly at ease with neither of you perhaps saying very much, not feeling the need to fill the space with lots of words. Little was said but it was good just being together. In our reading from Matthew 6 this morning, Jesus was reflecting on how we converse with God, how we pray. It's a small section from his Sermon on the Mount. He tells his disciples, when you pray, don't keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Jesus was probably thinking about the Greeks and Romans of his time and how they felt the need to persuade or placate their gods to make the rain come or the rain to stop, to give a good harvest, to bring good luck, etc. The problem was that they didn't have any personal relationship with their gods or any sense that these gods cared for them. And so they went on and on at them. Hardly a fulfilling, satisfying prayer experience. Jesus doesn't want our prayer experience to be like that. But sometimes, if I'm honest, I can be a bit like those pagans, babbling on and on. And our prayers can sometimes descend into the good old shopping list of requests, or simply talking at God and filling every moment with words. It's not that Jesus doesn't want us to come to our Father with our requests. Indeed, the prayer that he taught us, the Lord's Prayer, well, it has a number of requests. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Jesus does want us to bring our concerns and needs to God. But he wants us to do so remembering that we come to God who is our Father in heaven, a God we know, we can trust, who we have relationship with. He knows our every thought, concern, anxiety and need before we've even voiced it to him in prayer. He knows us intimately and he cares for us. Another of our readings this morning is Isaiah 55 verses 10 to 11 which reassures us that God's word does not return to him empty, but will achieve the purpose for which he sent it. When God hears and answers our prayer, when he speaks his word, he promises to action it as well. We can be confident in God's power as well as his care for us. We will be heard and he will answer us in line with his will. I find real reassurance in the words of King David praying in Psalm 34. I sought the Lord and he answered me. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. 
He saved him out of all his troubles. So in our prayer, we don't need to anxiously babble on and on at God, but we can place our needs and our requests in his hands and leave them there, at least for the time being. We can, and we probably will, come back to them another day. And then just going back to that conversation I mentioned at the beginning with that person who we can sit in comfortable silence with. Perhaps we can do just that with the Lord in prayer. To take a breath, a pause, and for a few moments to take some time out from saying any more words. To take some time in the quiet, just being in God's company and seeing if there's anything that he might like to say or share with us. We may not find it very comfortable being in silence. We may not quite know what to do with ourselves. If so, just a simple gesture of opening our hands, palms upwards to God, as a way of expressing our openness to him, may help. And perhaps reflect on a verse from a Bible passage that we've been reading. Our Father in heaven might be a good phrase to spend time with today. King David's experience, Psalm 34 again, was that those who look to God are radiant. I like to think that as we take time being in the Lord's company, being comfortable with him in the moments of quiet, as well as talking to him with words, that we might enjoy something of the rays of, God's, of God warming our faces, making us radiant like a really fulfilling conversation with one close to us. God wants us to find fulfilment in time spent with him in prayer. Well, we're going to take some time now in the quiet and then I'll lead us in a prayer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the gift of prayer. Thank you that we can trust you with our requests, knowing that you hear us and will answer us. During this season of Lent, help us to make time to seek you and be with you, praying with words and without words. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. <laughs>